thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Here's the thing, for most people, the idea of making passive income online from what you love sounds great. But to start with, I had no idea where to start. Well, fast forward a year and this YouTube channel has accidentally turned 12 months of digital creation into six figures and my most profitable year ever. I can't believe it. Interested in how? Hi, it's Simon, this is Better Creating, and these are the 10 key lessons that I've learned to help turn a creative itch or personal pastime into your life-changing business. And stick around to the end for the quickest and easiest ways you can start making passive income online from what you already know. So number one, just start now. No one is watching and it doesn't have to make money. If you have an idea for a side project that feels genuinely fun to do, just Start. I've come to believe that most good businesses come about from an urge to do it because it seemed fun, a personal learning opportunity or a desire to genuinely offer value to others. But most importantly, not from a master plan of making money. When my freelance work in the theatre industry dried up, for example, in 2022, because of that little thing beginning with C and ending with Ovid, it actually resulted in a personal metamorphosis. Sorry, that's such a bad literary pun. <laughs> These jokes just get worse. With no work and a plan to reorganise and optimise my life, I decided to start this channel to document my journey. I taught myself Notion and gradually found that I was building a business around both, helping people like me to find the ideas and tools to lead more productive, stress-free lives. So just starting to mess around with an idea that excites you gives permission to make mistakes, try things out and learn as you go. And trust me, no one is watching at the start. And the key to making that work? Number two, follow the 10% rule. You don't have to jack your job in and go all in on a new venture. In fact, it's likely that you definitely shouldn't straight away. So I suggest do what I did accidentally and follow the 10% rule. Just try giving 10% of your time to the new venture each week. So maybe that's four hours of a 40 hour week. For me, it asked to then grow from there because I enjoyed it and I didn't seem completely awful at it. I remember the rise of side hustle culture circa 2013 to 2019 and remember it resulted in a lot of people grinding themselves to the bone trying to get a business off the ground. Well honestly I just wasn't willing to do that to start with. Putting in 10% is doable and when you get bitten by the bug of whatever you're on those longer hours are much easier to grow into when you're fired up about it. Next if you're looking to create content like a YouTube channel, podcast or anything else repetitive I subscribe to focusing on number three quantity over quality, at least to start with. Why? Well, it means you take the pressure off, escape paralysis through perfectionism, and allow yourself to learn by regularly doing something, learning a little more each time. This also helps to play into the idea of compounding something over time. So YouTube is a great example. The more videos you create, the better you get at it, the more content there is to be found, and then the more people that you can reach. The same goes for digital products. Start small and simple, get feedback, improve it over time. If you think you need to be reaching hundreds of thousands of people to make it meaningful, however, you'd actually be really surprised. Four, you only need 1,000 true fans to start a real business. This is based on Kevin Kelly's 1,000 true fans article. You just don't need as big an audience as you think to make money. If you can grow a small devoted audience in a specific niche where you can truly offer people value, you'll have everything you need to start making some proper income. What's more, you can also keep your focus fixed on providing a more personal and valuable connection with people. Another way to put this, grow a loyal audience first. So to those of you that have been with the channel for more than a year, thank you. And everyone else, you've been amazing. Drop me a comment below and let me know how you found me and why you stayed. Check out the link to Kevin Kelly's famous blog about 1000 true fans in the description. And hey, if you're finding this valuable and you're not subscribed, it would be great to have you as part of the Better Creating community. So click that button. Number five, learn from those that went before you. There are some great podcasts and YouTube channels out there with interviews and genuinely helpful tips and origin stories that help you picture a path that is actually achievable. I'll link some in the description below of my favorites. One of the best places to start with though is today's sponsor, Skillshare. And for that matter, maybe it's even where you might be able to create your own course and begin making money online yourself. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore 
your creativity and personal growth on their own terms. If you have a specific skill you are trying to learn, it's the perfect place to start from productivity and entrepreneurship to creative writing, film and video and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I found Skillshare when looking up better ways to up-level my skills in running an online business and Ali Abdul's class on starting a successful side hustle has been a massive help in growing this channel and my digital products. It's helped me optimise and leverage my time more effectively around my freelance commitments and in fact some of my favourite Notion productivity builds have been inspired by ideas I've discovered on Skillshare. So just give it a try, you've got to do it. The first 1,000 people to use this link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Seriously, it's the most valuable thing I've tried for ages. Number six, don't underestimate the knowledge and skills you have taken for granted. I started to grow on YouTube talking about what I knew and sometimes just reteaching what I'd literally just learnt. I think the content that most helps me find new audiences are always things about what I'm most passionate and excited about myself. You can't fake that. But the biggest discovery for me was realising how things I assumed most people would already know can actually be a revelation to them. I recently ran a Notion workshop for a group of people exploring no-code productivity. I shared a few things I considered to be reasonably obvious ideas and couldn't believe the response from the group saying how mind-blowing the ideas were. It turns out your perspective can be very different from those who are new to a world that you've spent a bit of time in. So keep it simple and remember what helped you when you were new to something you know about. Number seven, monetize what you know. I made my first five dollars online doing two things, monetizing the things that came easily and trying to solve people's problems with simple solutions. Early on, I had built myself a prompted Stoic journal template in Notion, inspired by reading about the Stoics and Marcus Aurelius. I gathered journaling prompts and strategies and made them into a template. When a friend of mine told me about how he was selling templates on Gumroad, so I just took the leap, put it up for sale, and people actually bought it. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. And that has turned gradually into a business that has brought thousands of people into the Better Creating community and to use my Notion productivity system it is amazing what can happen in just over a year. The best thing about working in this way is that you're leveraging your time in a different way to a nine to five job. How? Focus on creating assets rather than earning money. I realized this year that streams of income are best thought of as assets that you create once that then earn you money over time. Each video here is just that. And what's great is you learn from the response to them. So ever since I shifted my focus from trading my time for money to creating products, I found I've been able to offer more value to more people whilst reducing my time doing the work. What's more, this also means what you've made continues to reach an audience and earn money passively for you whilst you're working on creating or improving the next thing. Pretty cool. Number nine, work out how to be redundant in your own business. To be clear, what I'm really talking about are two approaches that make a really big difference. Learn about ways to automate and set systems for your process so that it works for you. This is the key to letting the assets you create truly offer you a passive income rather than just making you work harder to manage them. By having other tools help you manage your work or do the bulk of the technical delivery for you, you get to focus more time on being a dreamer for the next ideas and directions. So according to Michael Gerber in the E-Myth Revisited, business owners have three personalities or roles that we fulfill, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. Too many of us, I think, get lost in the day-to-day -day being the technician, leaving ourselves no time to dream up the what-ifs. Just read the E-Myth book. It really is a game changer, and I don't use that YouTube term lightly. Number 10, lots of small baskets, more golden eggs. If you can create multiple income streams that are easy to scale and automate, you'll be well on the way. So as promised, here are four passive online income ideas I found to be fantastic so far. Write an ebook or create a simple template like my Notion systems on a subject or existing platform that you know well, then sell it on a platform like Gumroad. Digital products have low overheads and can be easily automated. If you've built a following through offering consistent, valuable content, you can use affiliate links to link related products to get a kickback. Amazon links for me make around $500 to $800 a month passively at the moment, or even just learn some SEO tools to help people find your suggestions. Offer consultancy online via Zoom on a subject people might need help with. You could set this up with supporting documents on Gumroad and use Calendly to manage bookings. You can always scale this into a digital course to work with groups or via video content on a platform like Skillshare later on down the line. 
Invest some money in a stock market index fund that tracks something like the Fortune 500. Now, this is not financial advice. You've got to do your own research. But on average, it could return around 7% and will, of course, compound over time. Let us all know your top tips for running a successful side hustle online in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I recommend watching this video next for more on how your own second brain digital productivity system can improve your life. It would be awesome if you subscribed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.